Hi, welcome to Long Lost Friends. I'm Elizabeth Eve King. And I'm Andrea Goyen. Elizabeth and I used to do improv comedy together back when we were 19 and lost touch. A few years ago, we discovered each other and found out we're both painters, performers, animal lovers, and Pilates teachers, and naturalists. Elizabeth, I'm not a naturalist. I mean, I love nature, but that counts. What's important is we're, we're all long lost friends. friends. <laughs> And we're both award-winning fiction writers. After one of my stories appeared on Metastellar, we started this show. Metastellar, for those of you who don't know, is an online fiction magazine. We publish original horror, science fiction, fantasy. There's a link below to check us out. Today, we are so excited to be joined by Craig Sim Webb. Craig is a dream analysis best-selling author and researcher. He's also widely traveled educator, musical artist, inventor, and award-winning filmmaker. He's part of a pioneering research team at Stanford. His book, The Dream Behind the Music, reveals little-known dreams that inspired tremendous success for over 100 top artists and highlights principles and techniques anyone can use to harvest their own dreams for significant breakthroughs. You can find it at the Dreams Behind the Music. Link below. Hi, welcome back, Craig. We're so thrilled to once again be talking to Craig Sim Webb. And before wow. we get started, we really, this time, want to see a physical pet from you because you said you have one. Oh, and I like the, the recurring dream here. I'm glad to be back with you too. <laughs> I do have pet. Uh, last thing when I mentioned about my like dream pet, which people might've rolled their eyes. But here's, uh, here's another little playful pet. Uh, and I can explain the story, but I call it my drone doggy. <laughs> uh, because it comes home and returns home. I can get it to roll around, oh, roll wow. over and uh, do other things. Uh, even if I turn it on, uh, it can, you can see my little eye kind of moving around in a second there. Oh, yeah. uh, so, and it, it's sort of a joke, but I, I actually have a feeling about it and started dreaming of it as a pet with his one eye and something that I really loved. So forgive me if it's not the furry kind, but uh, you can certainly enjoy uh, moments well, with it. Like That's very speculative fiction -y of you. Very yes. Yes. Maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm uh, too much of a computer techie nerd or something. <laughs> Very speculative fiction of you. Very much. Uh, but it allows it actually helps uh, the videos and the photos, but especially the videos actually helps induce lucidity. So maybe an interesting segue for some of our talking our, our topic today. Yeah. Well, we wanted to talk about any any like hints that you have to help listeners remember more dreams yeah that's pretty good and i think as elizabeth had mentioned uh, maybe andrea had mentioned uh it is a bit of a doorway so dream recall is a bit of a doorway to lucid dreaming premonitions and a lot of the other benefits that can come from what i really call the internet there's no t in that one it's sort of like the internet but inside us and it's a bit of a wordplay ha <laughs> ha but it's actually a really good analogy to imagine if, you know, you didn't have connection with the internet. Is it the end of the world? No, but you missed out on a lot of stuff. You can't really use GPS, you can't get your emails, you can't watch videos, etc. Same thing for the internet. You can get by without being connected with the internet of dreams or intuition, but uh, unfortunately you'll miss out on an awful lot, just like you would on the internet. And what do we see on the, the internet? Because as above, so below, right out of the Upanishads, an ancient 5,000-year-old text from India. As above, so below, that means whatever shows up in physical life that's widespread, there's going to be some inner version of it, sort of invisible, subtle, dream, symbolic, subconscious version. That's just how life works. It manifests towards physical reality. So there is an internet. We are able to communicate with each other on inner planes. I actually have students who sort of visit each other and trade messages in dreams. 
uh, and then check them on waking, uh, you know, with a third party there to make it a little more scientific. And they're valid, very rare messages, etc. So some of the things, fun things we do in classes. So uh, how so, do you give us some some of those tips? Yeah. So oh, one good. of the things is get passionate. It's sort of a subtle tip. It's probably the most important one. I say uh, on the top of the list, we can we can include a little Betty Crocker list here. I will send you a link there. Check below, I guess. Uh, but uh, in the list there, you'll see the top one is just want it or really get impassioned, enthusiastic about it. So if you find an application, usually I, people say, no, I just want to know how to do it. I'm telling you how. Actually find something that would really benefit you. You know, maybe you want to speak to your friend across the world and you can't really easily speak to them or you just want a fun experiment. Maybe you want to go flying. Maybe you want a creative inspiration for a story or anything like that that will actually trigger your recall more interesting if you realize dreams bring this kind of stuff every night. It's just that we're not usually tuned in. We don't check our emails. We don't tune to the internet. So get passionate. That's one of the most important techniques. And then there's very specific, a little more physical ones. Uh, I would say keep all the, and an analogy I use is like, let's, let's say maybe a, a slider and a music gig, you know, when the DJ has his five channels of information the drums, the tuba, the guitar, whatever. Uh, there's one channel and, and we're making these five channels equal to the physical senses. There's one channel, maybe the six channels uh, is called dreams. And the other channels, let's say the, the taste, the touch, the ears, the eyes, I guess the balance is in there. Uh, those are the physical senses. They're usually very loud in waking life. So that means probably dreams are happening all the time. We could remember them easily, except the physical senses are really loud. So they kind of disappear, evaporate, or they're just too soft. If we turn down all the senses, and that's kind of a practical technique there. How do you do that? Well, in bed, if you opened your eyes when you wake up, just close your eyes. If you moved and rolled around when you woke up and then remembered, oh yeah, I wanted to recall my dreams. Just roll back to the exact same position you woke up when. You know, don't change the blood flow in your brain. Don't change the touch. Don't move around. If you didn't move and you remember right away, even better, you know, don't open your eyes, stay still. And then, so physically keep all the senses very low. You know, no waking up to an alarm here. If you absolutely have to get up to, I don't know, let's say 7.15 or whatever your wake up time is to make it to the office, to make it to, to get the kids to school or whatever. Uh, set your alarm, but set a body clock, set an intention. Have you ever done that? Uh, Andrea, Elizabeth, you kind of yeah, just say, hey, I'm going to wake up at like 7.02. <laughs> you ever tried that? And it works. People say, what? Yeah, it works. In fact, there's a really fun variation for, for you guys who want to just take a little segue on the side here. Uh, try saying, wake me up at the perfect time for my day tomorrow. Kind of suggest to yourself before sleep oh. and see what happens. You know, experiment on a Sunday and then and see what happens. Sometimes you wake up 30 minutes early. Go, I don't need to get up yet. And you back on the pillow. And then you have a flat tire and you're late for the meeting. Oops. Somehow dreams or subconscious intuition knew. Or you wake up 30 minutes late and you start freaking out and you rush down and fall, you know, gulp the coffee, burn your tongue, and you realize the morning meeting was canceled that day. Yes, there's some very interesting results. So, but just a little intention before sleep can really help too. So, hey, subconscious, hey, dreams, you know, my friend dreams, true to like a friend. It's natural and easy to remember dreams and not just remember them and maybe know what they, they mean, but it's actually really natural and easy and simple and it's a universal thing that people can do just to know what dreams want. So you easy to remember, easy want. to understand. Do you feel like dreams want, like, like I might want something different than my dreams want? Yeah, or it's just that you didn't know maybe a subconscious intuitive part of you wanted something. But yeah, you might also have a waking wish. You know, you love that chocolate, but dreams might say, you know, I didn't fall asleep quite as well for the last uh, four days. The, the chocolate at like 11 p.m. watching that scary movie. Unfortunately, it's not so great. So sometimes our waking whims, but more often than not, it's just things we weren't aware of. Example, Charlie Wilson. I'm not sure why I thought of him actually has the same initials as me. So that's interesting. But musician Charlie Wilson, uh, actually his wife, I think Maheen is her name, woke up with a dream, very clear dream with a little bit of music. And she saw that if they recorded it, produced it, you know, kind of wrote it out fuller, uh, they could actually be nominated for a Grammy. Not win and not some other award, but be nominated for a Grammy. 
And she said, okay, well, she recorded it. And then over the weeks they worked on it, produced it, and they actually acted on the dream. They did what probably the dream wanted. And in fact, they got exactly a nomination for that little dream inspiration. And many, many other artists, 200 artists, actually huge hits, you know, many, many multi-million dollar Beatles top two hits. I guess, I think 20 Grammys, lots, lots of big hits. And many other artists, lots of writers, Stephen King's a big one, but there's many others, James Cameron, screenwriter. So what do dreams want is not an insignificant question. Usually that's how our inner gifts, our dreams, our hopes, and sometimes our intuitive kind of internet messages, how they come to the world is because we act on them. So what do they want is a good question. And if we fall asleep saying, hey, it's natural and easy, Trust me, maybe somebody comes in the dream, starts narrating it. You never had that before? Well, I've seen that happen with my students. And then they say, oh, this means this and this, and this is about your father. And you know what? Go talk to him about this because there's an unsettled business. What does the dream want? Probably, you know, call dad or maybe go visit for Father's Day or whatever. So I understand that you have designed various mind, body, and educational devices. Could you share with us about those? and how they how they work and yeah well uh there's uh, quite a number uh, one of me i sort of have a few <laughs> few selves here uh, hopefully not too dyslexic or <laughs> what do you call that crazy uh, but one of me is an inventor using creativity i guess for physical products uh, one of the inventions actually is very related to dreams uh, many people may not be aware that the first uh, dream mask that helps induce lucid dreams uh, and it has its little goggles that you wear while you sleep. It has uh, biofeedback, so it actually watches your eye movements with a little sensor. Uh, and when you go into the right timing and phase and sort of brain state for, for lucid dreaming, uh, it gives a little feedback, a little flashing lights, or it could be a little sound, or it actually has some other types of outputs too. Do you have Just a, say, a link to, to seeing one of those? Uh, well, yeah, if you're patient, I can uh, I have it on the other side of the room here. I <laughs> go and show it to you. Uh, if people want to look oh, it up. It's not for sale anymore, but it's called the Nova Dreamer. I developed that at uh, Lucidity Institute at Stanford Research. It actually brought lucid dreaming to the public like 30 years ago. So uh, that's been reproduced in different forms and I have a little caveat that comes with it. I just say to people, it's great. Uh, a lot of people had their first lucid dreams because it does give a little cue during your dreaming sleep. Uh, sort of, hey, Andrea or Elizabeth, you're dreaming right now. You see, if it's too loud, it'll just wake you up. So that's good for dream recall, but not so good for lucid dreaming. And if it's not very loud or not bright enough, then you just wasted a few hundred bucks. So that's not good. But if you get it in that little window, it kind of enters your dream. Maybe somebody comes in, starts taking flash pictures or or the light that's on you for the Zoom meeting starts flashing and you go, oh, that's not usual. And it helps you question, hey, am I am I dreaming? Maybe the, I'm sleeping with the mask on and it's flashing at me. And that's why the room lights are fl flickering. Uh, so it gives a little cue during the dream sometimes and helps you go lucid. But I have the caveat that says, hey, you, there's a lot of these things, lucid dreaming, premonitions, dream recall, or you know, very good applied dreaming, practical dreaming. They don't necessarily have to come from lucid dreams and they don't necessarily have to be created by technologically induced dreams. Uh, but yeah, it's one of the tools, why not? So if you keep it in mind as one of the tools and lots of other empowering tools, which we can give a few today, uh, that's kind of where its place is. But yeah, the Nova Dreamer, check it out. And it's actually induced a lot of dreams for a lot of people. So what I think is one of the more interesting uses of technology, help people grow, expand their horizons, <laughs> why not? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So other techniques, you guys want to learn a little bit more about, uh, well, Dream Recall, we'll, we'll post a link. And actually, we'll, we'll give a link to for lots of lucid dreaming tips. Uh, but it's usually better when I sort of coach directly and over time, because lucidity is not kind of an on-off skill for most people. It's kind of a ramp it up kind of skill. So I lead 10-week teleclasses, and we really learn to master it by, you know, week four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we also learn lucid living, you know, let's get more conscious, more awake, not react in our waking lives to recurring dramas, not just dreams. Uh, so it has a pretty practical thing. People can check it out at applieddreaming.com. Maybe we'll post, post that link there too. Mm -hmm. But some of the ways you can become lucid is just start thinking of uh, somebody who might appear in your dreams that you won't really have any easy way to see. Ideally, you can log your dreams, you can record them, that'd be great. Sometimes a little voice recorder and then you transcribe later. 
or you actually just write it or you type it in or something and then see, hey, is there anything that shows up commonly, especially someone deceased? Like example, my deceased doggy who I spoke about shows up pretty often. And then I just set my intention to that person showing up or being present because they're not going to happen in, in physical life if they've passed on or if they're, you know, maybe in a distant country, uh, if I don't Zoom with them, that is. Uh, but uh, I say, okay, whenever I dream with my deceased doggy, you know, whenever I actually see, I won't say dream because I don't usually know it's a dream until I, I recognize, okay, set an intention, maybe a little 5 20 to 10, 20 second visualization, seeing doggy, looking at my hands, doing a state check. Hey, am I awake? Am I dreaming? Oh, eight, 10 fingers on one hand. That doesn't usually happen. Hey, dream doggy, this is a dream. Woohoo! And then whatever experiment you had planned. So have something you can set an intention to before sleep, visualize it. That'll help an awful lot. Uh, lots of other ways. Oh, this is a very interesting one from our Stanford research that seemed to, to help about four to 500%, which is a lot in statistics, four to five times as many lucid dreams. Split up your sleep. Uh, and that's not always as easy if we have the work schedule or the family or, or whatever, but maybe on a weekend day or on a vacation, actually interrupt your sleep, stop, uh, you know, wake up about an hour and a half earlier than you normally might or three hours early. Uh, do something for a little while, probably 20, 30 minutes, nothing too extravagant, like, you know, working on the computer program, because then probably you'll just dream about that so much after you go back. But something kind of reading, reading about lucid dreaming is great. Looking over your dreams, listening to music can be okay. And then go back to sleep for sort of the, the missing portion, what we call wake back to bed technique, uh, which I published during Stanford research and it's gone all around the world now. That helps four to 500%. During the little period that we fall back asleep, we're very likely to become lucid. So there's another little tip for our viewers and I hope you become lucid. Send me an email. I always love it when I, when I hear from people. Oh yeah, I will. I'm gonna. So I'm gonna try and, and do that. Any any other like tips that you think would really? Uh sure, sure. There's a whole list there. So check out the list there, or go to AppliedDreaming.com. There's a link there. Uh, you can also go to my I think uh, my speaker site, Craig Webb with two B's, CraigWebb.ca, not .com because it's Canada. Uh, and there's usually a whole bunch of tips there for recall and. But I think here under the video with the Metastellar, you can check out those links. Uh, let's see, another one that's really good is what I say, have a really nice presence. So what is kind of a little theory here for a second? What is lucidity? Lucidity is presence, sort of being lucid. -id. Uh, that's a bad word play, I know, but kind of keeping our identifications, our reactions, our emotions going crazy. Lighter, freer, perspective, witness, noticing. Ah, oh, yeah, there's lots of clouds, maybe thunder, storm, birds, crazy things in the sky. Become the sky, have presence, notice thoughts, uh, especially as we're falling asleep. You know, if you need to write down all your to-do items or other stresses or whatever, have to call Joe, have to that before sleep. So get that out of your mind. And then kind of get really present and quiet. Uh, start noticing maybe your breath. That's a really good one. Ah, breathing. That's interesting. If you can, start to notice your heartbeat. Notice the sheets. Get very present. Quiet mind. If you get really subtle, this is really sort of getting there. Notice your own awareness or notice your noticing, kind of an infinite loop, just to recognizing pure awareness. And then just let yourself in that pure, present kind of well-being, feeling good about life, no cares, no concerns. Just lift off. Uh, lift off. Yeah, probably you will. Have just drift off gently into, into dreams. In fact, you might actually enter what's called a wake-induced lucid dream, wild wake-induced lucid dream. Uh, you might actually directly drift off into a dream or into a little hypnagogic dream at the start of sleep. People do experiencing that because they're very present and you didn't go wham bunk into deep sleep and go unconscious. You kind of surfed in gently with a lot of presence. So there's another little tip, and you can usually combine a lot of these tips I'm giving you and, and have success. But I can say the most thing that kind of keeps our motivation over time is have some friends, have a team. That's why I lead the teleclasses where usually teams are about six to 12, because the motivation and the other people's lucid dreams get us inspired and it keeps us going over time. Uh, so find some friends or a team or something where you can be motivated over time. And then you'll, you'll just naturally start to have more and more and more. 
so good. So good for, for again, for, well, for everything. But then I, I just, I love the opening of all that unconscious stuff for, um, for creativity. I mean, it just, you know, you wake oh, up yeah. and have a little nugget that you can just fly with. Sounds like a writer talking. Yeah, well, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> writer creative. I mean, both Elizabeth and I do a few different things. But yeah, I mean, it's just you that kind to. of thing. Just go, oh, yeah, okay. Now I see that. Or I feel that. Sometimes it's not even, sometimes it's a feeling, right? I mean, sometimes yeah. you wake up with a feeling. Or just the knowing. People say, well, I didn't remember any dreams. But you kind of had like this inspiration or a new thought. I call it first waking thought. Uh, thought isn't the best word because it's a little like, different. If we put electrodes on your brain and everything, you'd see it a little different state than how we're talking now in linear logic beta. Uh, but let's just call it first waking thought because there's not always a lot of visuals. <sighs> you know, if we have an in-breath at that moment, just waking up, inspiration in French actually means in-breath, inspiration, I think in Spanish too. So when you get, <gasps> ah, 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 we say, that's usually a pretty good sign that that's from the deeper subconscious. It might've been a dream and it's just percolating into thought. And those types of, let's say, deeper, more intuitive thoughts, they, they usually have pretty interesting payoffs when we act on them. So remember what we said before, hey, what does that first waking thought or what does that dream want? When can I act on it? That's a really interesting thing. And when you have your groups, do they like, is part of it, just motivating each other like you would in any kind of a, you know, whether it's a writer's group or whatever, or is it reaching each other through dreams? All the above and way more. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for your passion. I like that there was a big question mark because I'm still learning what, what can happen. Uh, one of the things we often do, we see all the time because some of the dreamers I worked with are like 10 years now. Uh, we have interdreaming or telepathic dreaming or things where they link up. Uh, we've had deceased people visit us like with verifiable things <laughs> that we couldn't have known about any other way. So sometimes out of, I guess, out of physical reality, people come in our dreams and we share it with others, sometimes helper dreams for each other. I dreamt for one of my, I guess, students of her deceased brother and, and various other things. Sometimes it's just motivation by actually just being celebrating. Hey, wow, you guys had this crazy lucid dream this week where I broke the speed of light. What? Oh my God, I want to do that. So that kind of inspiration sometimes works. And then we do specific home play. It's not really homework because it's more fun, but we do a specific home play experiments each week and report It's very interactive. It's not just like talk at you kind of stuff. Everybody gets to share, everybody gets feedback, everybody gets to ask questions, think out loud uh, and explore. You know, They get to really understand what their own dreams mean with group feedback and maybe mirroring and other techniques and then learn how to become lucid by other people's techniques that seem to work like a charm. Oh, look at that. I tried this very special stuff before sleep, you know, galantamine, special kind of additive. And I had a lucid dream. Wow, that's kind of cool. And then we learn from each other that way. So I think of it as kind of the team play. We're stronger together. Isn't that uh, Stephen Covey, one of his seven habits? Make it a team win or something? Oh, maybe. What's galantamine? Uh, galantamine is one of the additives that recent research has shown to help induce uh, lucid dreams if used in a sort of a special way in the right timing and the right dosage. I don't necessarily encourage all the additives because you can certainly have plenty of empowered lucid dreams without, but once in a while, if you want to explore, it can help. Vitamin B can help a little bit. It certainly helps with recall, B6, B12, uh, and sometimes helps induce a little bit more lucidity. Those techniques we gave a little earlier are probably more powerful generally. The presence of mind, splitting up your sleep, having something you can set an intention towards, you know that you'll probably dream about what's called a dream sign. And many of the other tips, check, check below. And then get a, get a motivated team so that over time, you know, over months to years, you can just inspire each other and not lose the thread. Because most people get excited for a week, two weeks, a month maybe, and then I eh, forgot or had one and I don't know. But over time, it really pays big. It's a relationship. That's great. And I was going to say, yeah, I mean, it's something that it's like anything. You have to develop it. It's not just going to turn a switch on and suddenly be there. It's like meditating or anything. It's, and it's, if something it's did little, switch it on like that, I'd be a little concerned. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of other things is it switching on and off in my body and my mind and my brain cells at like high speed? I don't know. You know, like, Let's go organic here. Slow <laughs> Keep it organic. 
slowly, but that's interesting. Uh, and I am curious about uh, vitamin B and, and gala. Yeah, little additives, you know, there's the technology and then there's the techniques. I can tell you, and this is hopefully the one free product sample, the viewers, you guys uh, can all have this also, but Andrea, Elizabeth, uh, usually the one free product sample comes with each talk or presentation. <laughs> that means you can have a lucid dream tonight just by me suggesting it and getting excited, talking about, thinking about. There yeah. is a certain momentum to thoughts. Uh, I'm just sort of using that word a little loosely, momentum. But where what we're thinking about, what we're ruminating, what we're wondering, visualizing, actually ends up happening in our dreams. You've probably seen that in your own dreams. So today you're a lot more likely to have maybe a, a dream during which you know you're dreaming, just in case you do, or just in case the viewers do. I usually encourage uh, to have a plan, have an experiment. If you have a lucid dream tonight, everybody, viewers, you, you guys should think of this too, but Andrea, Elizabeth, what would you like to try if you become fully aware you're dreaming? Any thoughts? I want to be flying. Flying's a pretty good one. That's a good first one, which you can't That's usually fun. do in waking life without a plane or Maybe a huge drone nowadays. They well, have these cars. Scuba diving is a lot like flying, but yeah, but without the gear, right? And dreams, without you the don't gear, need I'd the like gear. it without the gear. You're right. It Very is. nice. Yeah, actually, that's that's such a good one because it's been a long time since I've had a flying dream, and they always make me very happy. Very happy. So yeah, Very I don't. Good. Yeah, I don't think about that. That's good. Okay, that's good. And kind of set that as your plan. Why do I say that? Well, first off, it's fun to start to hear from other people. Hey, what's your experiment? You know, oh, maybe I'll ask the dream reader, what do I most need to know or experience right now for my whole life? <laughs> it's an interesting oh, experiment. Well, uh, but there's lots of other variations. You know, you can just ask the subconscious right there directly and get an answer <laughs> in real time. But flying is a very good one. A lot of people try. And I would say start if start with levitating. Sometimes people fly into hydro wires and they get all freaked out. So just levitate a little bit if you've done it quite a bit. Okay, yeah, you can do Superman style Shazam or whatever. Uh, but have a plan because some people get loose. Like, oh my God. You know, they do a reality check or spontaneously just know they're dreaming. Oh my God. And then they get so excited emotionally, they wake up. <laughs> So missed opportunity which is not the end of the world but it, if it's like if it was your first one in a month and you have to wait for a while more oh no so have a plan and uh, that'll actually help mitigate or at least control the emotions a little bit oh yeah i wanted to fly or i wanted to meet my favorite movie star and have an interlude or, or whatever you know <laughs> groundhog day all over again did you guys see that movie yes, yes. <laughs> but also I, I i'm kind of the the whole well what do i need to know most in my life right now that's kind, i mean that's probably even better than flying. It's just, it's such a big thing to contemplate. Thing. You know, yeah, it's I, not I like I can, the... you know, I can visualize flying in various ways, but visualizing what do I need to know most? Well, if I knew it, I wouldn't need to know it, right? I mean, and uh, my, just so uh, I can see both your hands going to your head there, a little body feedback yeah. for you, uh, which is fine and fun, but just notice body language speaks to us of the world. Uh, my wording, uh, if, you, if you kind of listen back, and this is important, so I'm glad we emphasize it for the viewers, is what do I most need to know and or experience? Because often it might be on a feeling level, or it might just be something that we don't consciously say, oh, this, that thing, do that. It might just be kind of intuitive or an impulse that I follow the next day, or a whole feeling that gushes through, and then later in the day, you know, or a week later, I get this huge creative inspiration that came out of nowhere, but it was kind of seated in that feeling or that healing or that creative blast, something that might not have just been knowing at the time. So no and or experience is what I usually encourage. It's kind of like software, the specific code or the specific thought or wording can really make a difference. So uh, just one, so if you were lost, so say I, that's me, it's not you, it's me. I'm lying in bed, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of my breathing and my heart and the sheets and everything. And I start thinking, okay, I'm going to tonight, I'm going to find out something I really need to know, whether it's emotionally know or intellectually know. And I just think about Our that experience. lying there and eventually mm -hmm. that. Yeah, you could certainly sleep. suggest that to yourself before sleep. By the way, you don't have to have a lucid dream to actually start to get all of those benefits. You could actually put that same suggestion into your subconscious or kind of quietly really plant a little seed right now, maybe while you're watching. But obviously in a lucid dream, you usually get a pretty deep subconscious immediate feedback. It's sort of like direct connect, let's say over Zoom with Andrea or with Elizabeth. 
I'm speaking live. I got a feedback right away. That's sort of a little bit more why lucid dreaming is powerful. Otherwise, I might remember or look at the write up or whatever was her article or look at read her book, but it's not quite as direct or real time. But you can have that that same intention work anytime. Law of attraction works. Just in case people don't know, you know, I say this is the printout. What do I mean? <laughs> Physical life is the printout of our dreams, thoughts, creativity, intentions, uh, and certainly our lucid dream suggestions. They, they appear in waking life as things, as people, as relationships. Sometimes logically, you know, we write the screenplay. We write up our new short story with the creative inspiration from a dream. Other times it just kind of prints out or something weird. Synchronicity happens. That person shows up who we just happen to think about and wish we could see again. Uh, so we don't have to know the details exactly. But intentions do work. But when it's real time in your face, a lucid dream, it's pretty special you know, direct to direct with the deep wisdom of the subconscious, sometimes as a character or sometimes just a voice. Sometimes the scenario of the dream whips up the response. Let's say, hey, bring me a song that'll be a great hit musically, or let's have a story idea that's really going to make big one or that'll heal me like profoundly. Maybe it won't hit, you know, 20 million sales, but it'll really heal me to write that story. There you go. Now we're getting interesting kind of intentions. Interesting. Definitely. And you teach, you, you have groups you teach in this. Yeah, yeah. Lucid so, Living. Check out the website, applieddreaming.com. Two Ds in there. That's the actual classes. Or uh, people can look at more of my work on YouTube. I did a whole TEDx talk. I think uh, you have to search uh, UMKC TEDx and then my name because uh, that's where uh, the medical faculty at University of Kansas City in Missouri helped uh, invited me over to, to talk about dreams uh, and many many other videos and interviews that i gladly share with people because it's my passion and i guess my path to, to share some of these things and if you want to go deeper if you want to really start rocking it getting lucid in your life and uh, i'm very blessed to have lots of private clients and, and students sometimes they're both uh, but they're a little different some people like it private it's you know more counseling healing uh, and then sometimes uh, people like, uh, I guess, coaching, business coaching. I've actually coached top CEOs, actual A-list celebrities. Uh, and then uh, other times it's just a team win. We all have fun. I'm a journeyer. I'm a student as much as everybody. Uh, and we have lucid living classes. And of course, dreams and lucid dreams as part of that. Check it out at applieddreaming.com. Great. Great. Uh Thank you so much. Yes. You're very so welcome. Much, so much here. So much here to Especially think about. if you go lucid, because then in a roundabout way, I'm really welcome as my my Gaia, my Earth self. Yeah, no, that's so I can't wait a, to try some of these techniques and just uh, it's really exciting. It's... Example, like we we're talking about, I think uh, Elizabeth here is uh, Andrea is really into the creative side. So I think beside uh, Elizabeth, you can see a little image of uh, my movie poster. So during the pandemic, there you go, treasure in a bottle, lots of awards on there, uh, and lots of winners actually yes. for festivals now. Yes. Uh, and I don't really call myself a filmmaker. Maybe now I, I would put award winning, winning filmmaker, but I hadn't really thought, you know, I can do videos, edit videos and YouTube. But I woke up with this very interesting dream. It wasn't lucid particularly, it was kind of vivid, but I wouldn't say I knew during the dream I was dreaming. But somebody says, hey, Craig, there's a cave over there, a cavern, and inside there, there's a gift, a treasure waiting for you. Oh, yeah, cool. So I kind of entered into the cave and looked around. I noticed there was a lot of sort of water over the floor, which was kind of a challenge. So I didn't really want to go in there and get wet. I don't know if there's any weird creatures, but uh, I just kind of saw there was something under the water, uh, white writing, a bottle maybe, couldn't tell. I said, oh, I don't want to get wet. And then I saw on the back, a little ledge in the back of the cave, there was another one with dark writing. So I said, oh, okay, I don't have to, I kind of stretched and didn't have to get wet. And I, I grabbed it and it was a whiskey bottle uh, and uh, it had dark writing. Uh, I kind of woke up going, hmm, whiskey bottle. Is that a, how's that a treasure? What kind of gift is a whiskey bottle? It was empty, by the way. And I thought, oh, I, I had to think about it. Now it's obvious because you can watch the movie there, seven minutes short. It's on YouTube, Treasure in a Bottle. But I, I, I was thinking at the time waking up, how, how's that a treasure? And then I remembered, oh, for Christmas, I gave a bunch of empty bottles with these little kind of LEDs in them. I don't know if you've seen these strings of LEDs. Uh, it's kind of a gift, a decoration. And 
One of those was a whiskey bottle. I think I remember looking it up. I kind of checked it. Some old, it didn't have the name whiskey, but it had some brand. So I looked it up and I kind of looked at it. I'm holding it. And I said, how is this a treasure? I mean, I guess they're kind of like nice gifts for Christmas. But then I had this inspiration. That's kind of where the dream hits reality. I was asking, what does this want? And I had an aha. And it was a visualization. I have these prisms on my window that kind of refract the sunlight into rainbows. Probably you've had some of those. I have these big ones. They're 15 centimeters. And they, they do like, you know, about a 12-inch rainbow. Uh, so I thought, put the bottle between the prism and the wall. See what happens. And it was just amazing. So it morphed the rainbow into all these shapes and patterns. And then I did time lapse. So I, my creativity took it from there. But it became a treasure in a bottle because I actually created a video all about that. And uh, I got a Canada Council grant from the, I guess, the Art Council of Canada to actually do dream inspired music. And I, I made that dream inspired music, which came from my dreams as the soundtrack for the movie. And it happened to be during the pandemic and it turned out one of the, the bottles from the dream, the white writing was a Corona bottle. It was actually one of the ones where my bottles were that I was gonna give to friends. So Corona beer, you've heard of? So I thought, oh, this is something about during the pandemic. And then I sort of turned the, the analogy into the colors of a rainbow. Hey, let's get along together. There will be a, a light at the end of the rainbow. We will get through this. I don't know if you saw that big slogan for we will get through this, but that was in everybody's window over around here with a rainbow. So I thought, okay, there you go. I guess uh, maybe I'll make a movie about the pandemic. And I've been lucky enough that it went on like TV all across Indonesia and Italy and online and everything. So hopefully it's inspired some it. artists out there. I, have to give, I haven't seen it. I'll have to go give it a watch. Yeah, sure. that, no, it's we'll very... put a link uh, if you want. We can put a link down in the. Yeah, we can put a link down below for that too. So. Oh, thank you so I, I much. A lot to think of. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So it only opens up more questions, right, Andrew? It does. It does. But that's good. That's all. That's that what dreams do. They kind of like just send all your neurons sideways. Hey, we'll have to do a recurring dream. We can we can come back whenever and as often as you like. Okay, I'd love that. Yeah, it's really fast. I can't wait to try more of these techniques, and it's very yay. yay. I love it that it's gonna like the rubber hits the road, not just oh that was a. We thought about it because those inner gifts that are probably going to come in your dreams, maybe lucid dream, that's what we want in our world. So please do dream them up and then act on them. I will. Well, I have had some occasionally like incredible dreams that I've written up that have been a yeah, couple, one, so. once in a chicken soup of the soul book because it was wow. dream messages. It's really, like, you know, it was, and I think, uh, I think the chicken soup of the soul one is called something like listen to your dreams. Perfect. So, so it's a little loose. You guys are like experts yeah. already. Oh yeah. No, but I was really excited about it. It's, it's a topic that, you know, so much of our life is dreams and they're so real, you know, and it's, it's, it's kind of magical. So that's very exciting. Yeah. And talking about magic, we're going to go and end with the best things we learned this week. So for me, I, I'm always cheating. It's not exactly this week. But as some of you may know, I spent three months in Bonaire recently, like very recently, uh, growing and cleaning and planting coral, um, which is, it's a, it's a project actually, these, these coral things are happening all over the world and they're always looking for volunteers, divers and this and that. So I wrote about it and there'll be a link below for the small blue marble about Reef Renewal Bonaire and how you can make a difference volunteering or learning about it. And, uh, you know, our, our talk about dreams and our ocean, the creatures in our oceans is always like, wow, it's yes, so Yes, please. <laughs> so that's the best wow. thing I learned this week, sort of. Oh, okay. Um, uh, mine is, as I said in our recent talk, I was on vacation and I totally forgot I had to have a best thing. So I did my usual run to Google, run to Google, run to the internet and look it up. And um, I came across the fact that Vietnam has now got the longest glass bridge. It's glass? over a bridge, wow. a glass bridge. It's cool. over a 490 foot gorge and it's 2,000 feet long. So it'd be a little scary probably to walk on, but it looked beautiful. And Vietnam's a place I'd like to go to. So I was like, oh, that would be neat. Me too. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. 
and it's open now. That's the first thing they just reopened things after COVID. So uh, a glass just a little bridge. thing. Well, I've seen yeah. some glass bridges. They're pretty interesting. I have never seen them down bridges. at you through a floor. <laughs> yeah, there's one over there's there's a glass thing over a, like a lookout over the Grand Canyon. That oh. sounds I've like, heard that's good like, for uh, like, face you put, your if fear. You, if you put a um a mat on a table and you have a I had tortoises and you put a tortoise on the mat on a glass table, like a, a placemat. Mm -hmm. They walk, 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 walk. And when they get to that glass, they stop. And I think I'd be like that. Go to the edge. And I'd be, yeah, yeah I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I'd I don't, be that I don't tortoise know. on the mat. <laughs> I might check if I was dreaming and then leap off the edge if I was. There you go. That's but the way to definitely think. make sure that you, you're dreaming yeah. first. Yeah, before you <laughs> leap, before you leap, for sure. Wait, I've got. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, not off the edge anyway. But this, uh, do you know something? And we uh, want yeah. to thank Maria Corla. Oh. Oh, we have to wait. Craig has to tell us his. We have to wait for Craig because I've just I, the glass upset me too much. I was thinking about. <laughs> going to the glass edge and looking over and... okay sorry Craig. well uh maybe i'll take a segue from our word there uh, a little association my kind of dreaming brain goes by links uh, i learned this week that if you have very hot water and you kind of uh, i guess when i'm washing my glasses and turn the glass upside down on a pretty flat counter <laughs> uh, it'll actually start flowing and fall off onto the floor because the cold air inside it, when you're kind of moving it around, gets captured under the glass upside down and makes kind of like one of these jet hockey. <laughs> it sort of lifts, levitates the glass a little bit. And so be very careful to put your gla hot glasses upside down if they're wet. Far enough away from the edge oh. of the table or the yeah. edge of or the Or just put them on the dish rack, which I probably okay. should have done. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an interesting thing. I'm yeah. sure cats would like it too. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I'll thank Maria Corla, because sorry about that. And also Sydney Levinson, who does all our editing. And we desperately need that. So thank you guys both. And of course, thank you, Craig, for yes. sharing all these tips and information. And yes. it's really been amazing brain opening, yes. shall I say? Yes. Uh, well, um, I'm really blessed. I'll say uh, you've helped me here today. Uh, in a significant way, I mean, one of my greatest needs as a speaker, performer, and songwriter, singer, is to really get these inner gifts out to people. And it's going to happen through shows like yours. In fact, the, we didn't talk about it, but the vision dream, the calling dream for my whole life path was to later be on media, give presentations, and share about dreams. So, so you significantly helped a little bit of my, I guess, my fruits not go all moldy and get crushed. They've actually been delivered to some of your viewers, I hope. Yes, well, that's, that's well, yes, we hope so. And us too, yes. And, so every, and thank you everyone for joining us today. And if you like the video, leave comments below and maybe hit the like button. And be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you won't miss any upcoming notifications or and hit the notification button so you won't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you want to support our magazine, our publication, and help us to produce more original content, you can visit our Patreon page and make a donation where all the monies go to help pay for the new content. All the authors get the money. No one else. Everyone else is a volunteer. No dreamers? No, only if dreamers well, and dream stories that uh, we've accepted as a I better get exactly. writing. I better get some stories. <laughs> exactly. Ideas. Exactly. So thank you again, Craig. It's been really, really fun. Really, I'm really blessed. Really yeah. Thanks. I've had fun too. Thanks. Good. All right. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.